myself Vinod Kumar Prasad and uh, here is Rajdeep Kundu who is co-author of the paper to be presented. And, uh, my, at first I will like to thank all the members of organizing committee to make uh, such a conference a uh, great success and uh, provided us an opportunity to present our paper from this platform. Uh, my, the, the title of my paper is Several Methods of Future Instruction to Help in Optical Character Economics. Actually, the paper is uh, to build an uh, Bengali numeral uh, recognition, but uh, so, far, so far we have uh, so far we have done a partial work of that one, and uh, that is being presented by means of this paper. Actually, any optical character recognition system contains three bold states: that is, pre-processing, feature extraction, and classification. So, by means of this paper, uh, this paper, we are going to deal with only pre-processing and feature extraction. Then, after we will do classification uh, work in our follow-up work. And uh, and the main aim of this paper is to propose some uh, methods, some methods that uh, is devoid of any cumbersome calculation, so that if they are used for uh, classification, then the processing time could be reduced and our system could be set to be a real time system. That's why we have to propose some methods over here. So, but this is the this is motivation. Actually, a lot of work has been reported in literature. Uh, for recognition, character recognition, or numeral recognition of uh, Roman, Japanese, Chinese, or Arabic script. But uh, uh, respectively, uh, the Bangla numeral character recognition is uh, a few in uh, report in literature. So, and uh, so far, West Bengal is there, our state is there. Bangla, Bangla is the main language. That's why we have uh, tried to make uh, a system that could be helpful for the uh, state operation. Here I am showing a set of collected data. Actually, we have collected data from field, from people of different ages and uh, profession. So here is one set of that one. Actually, from this one, I want to say that uh, then all the numerals what have been written uh, by hand, actually they are not of uniform thickness. Um, that that thickness of writing actually depends upon uh, that very writer, and uh, it varies from writer to writer. So. This non uniform thickness is a problem over here. Except for that one, we are having here uh, seeing lines over here because we have given constraints over here. So these constant lines are not a uh, matter of interest over here. We only need this sample. At the same time, we can notice here that there are some uh, uh, unnecessary spots, pain uh, spots, or uh, scanning spots over here. These are actually a noise portion that is that are to be eliminated before we uh, enter into the actual methods of feature extraction. So all these um, works will be done in the pre-processing phase. So our pre-processing phase contains digitization, then binarization, then noise removal will be there. After uh, at the end of this one, these processes we will get the segmented character that will be from there we will extract the features actually. So far the first is that digitization is there. While scanning this one by means of digital scanner, the the handwritten sample or the hard copy of that uh, those things uh, are uh, digitized, and uh, we get a gray level image or image matrix from there when we read by means of our system. So this is a gray level image where the pixel values ranges from zero to two fifty five. These gray levels. These gray levels are to be converted to binary image for the easiness of processes to be carried out afterwards. So this binarization process has been done by means of thresholding. Here we have to choose some uh, uh, optimized threshold value, and by uh, and with the help of that threshold value, we have to recognize the, uh, a pixel to be uh, binary white or binary black. That is, after bin after getting binarized, we will get a uh, matrix containing only ones and zero, and uh, that has been shown in the next slide. Here, the ones, one pixels are the background, and uh, all the zero pixels actually represent the character. So here from we can see that in, in row one, in row, uh, say in row one, there is no any on pixel over here, but in the second row, we are having so many zero pixels over here. That means 
the writing impression is there on the zero mark pixel so these pixels are actually of matter of matter of interest for us next step will be our after getting binarized the sample images we are to remove the noise and for removing noise actually we have used uh, actually these noise are taken as uh, to represent a very high frequency and these high frequency can be eliminated only by means of low pass filter so um, and uh, so far literature is there the median filter is the best filter uh, low pass filter that can uh, remove the noise at the same time it uh, it does not affect the sharpness of the edge that the blurring effect is totally uh, avoided in case of median filter that's why the median filter has been used in our work here is a slide to show the effect of median filter we have taken a sample of bangla neural over here and we have added salt and pepper noise and those noise has been removed by means of uh, this is the this is the image after applying median filter so here it is quite obvious that all the salt and pepper noise have been uh, more or less avoided so this, that means median filter is better to remove all the unnecessary noise then we are to go for thin thinning actually thinning is needed because the thickness of the uh, handwritten sample varies from writer to writer so in order to apply some statistical method those samples should be of uniform thickness or say a better to tell single pixel thickness so that the stroke position or stroke um, position direction of stroke can be uh, noted from there so we are uh, using here uh, the process of skeletonization to get them so that the images could be of single pixel thickness. this is the result of skeletonization the upper one the upper ones represent upper ones represent these are the original um, binarized sample and these are the thin that means it is it is quite obvious that the thickness is uh, uh, reduced and from there there we can easily extract the features then we come to the step of feature extraction under um, under various methods we propose here the first one is pixel count method and this is applied row wise actually we are getting binary image containing one uh, matrix and matrix and image matrix containing ones and zeros so zeros will be taken as the on pixels over here by means of this method we are to count the number of on pixels in every row so and it is quite obvious just see in the next slide that for bangla numeral 9 we are having feature um, vectors like this so here we can tell that in all the uh, five initial five rows we are not having any on pixels but in the uh, in the sixth Row, we are having three on pixels over here. So it is it can be taken for granted that that for different numerals, this this data will have that all the data or all these feature vectors will not be common for two uh, different numerals. So these numerals may be the marketing features uh, that will help us in the last stage that classification. So these are going to help us in the recognition. Next one is pixel X or M. Since we are having image matrix containing ones and zeros, so X that means the gates, digital gates may easily be applied over here, and we have done the same by applying XOR gate. Here, on the two consecutive um, elements of image matrix in a row are XOR, and uh, for every row we will have either one or zero uh, at the end of one row. So since there, since our image size is of 50 by 50, 50 pixels, so 50 rows are there. And we will get 50 feature vectors at the output. So this is the uh, this is the feature vector for Bangla numeral three. And uh, here we can see that there are no any numeral uh, ex ex uh, except for zeros and ones due to XOR operation. Next one is alphabetical coding. Here we have used the letters of English alphabet to code uh, as we have done in the previous in the first one. That on pixels are counted in every row to give the feature vector over there. Now here we are adding that the each each row each row is subdivided into two two rows. That means twenty fifty uh, rows are going to give fifty uh, into two. That is hundred uh, sub rows over here, and 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 the on number of on pixels will vary from zero to twenty five. That means altogether we are going to have twenty six values. And those 26 values can easily be coded by means of 26 letters of English alphabet, and the same has been done by means of this feature vector method. Just see, sir. 
that this is the coding logic for us so if we are having zero pixel uh, zero number of uh, on pixel then that code for that uh, row will be a and if we are having 10 on pixels in uh, in a in a row then the coding for that row will be c so at the end we are going to have 100 uh, 100 iter pixels that means shown over in the shown here in the next slide for bangla number 6 we are going to have uh, coding like this then third third question next one is directional feature uh, i will uh, like to tell that uh, from literature we could follow that directional features are very good uh, and they they will go a long way to uh, extract the uh, demarcating features from any neural sample and that's why we have adopted directional features and under directional features there are so many methods but gradient method is preferred by um, our previous researcher researcher so here also we are going to, we are, we have derived the gradient features over here as we know that the gradient is uh, a vector quantity having two components vertical and horizontal component so for the, uh, the here we will find both magnitude and phase uh, of the gradient by to calculate the magnitude actually we are having uh, sobel mass this is this is mass actually this is so these are sobel mass and this is horizontal sobel mass and this is vertical sobel mass so this horizontal sobel mass will give the horizontal component of the gradient uh, at 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 a pixel position and this will give the vertical component and these two components will be uh, used over here to calculate the resultant magnitude at that pixel position actually and this this value will give the uh, angle phase angle uh, by means of those two components that is sp and sh calculated by the sobel mass and after getting that means that the magnitude will be obtained by means of that formula but so far angle is there we will have a number of angles over here but we have tried to quantize those angles by means of these eight standard directions so we initially initially we have taken these uh, these eight directions what we have done that if any value if any angle value ranges from 0 to 45 that has been quantized to be 45 any angle value lying in this quadrant that will be quantized at 90 so in this way we will get the phase value only uh, along this uh, standard line and afterwards to reduce the complexity what we have done that these these angles have been merged together that is 0 and uh, 0 and plus minus 180 degree as the obvious from here the 0 and plus minus 180 degree they have been uh, taken together as they are representing the uh, same line in a similar way plus 45 and minus 135 they have merged together so that the feature vector could be minimized and the complexity could be reduced so ultimately we will get only uh, feature vectors because uh, not one neural uh, the feature vectors will be 1 to 3 and 4 so uh, instead of getting eight feature vectors we will get, now get four feature vectors uh, to reduce the complexity of the system next one is chain code method this is very regular method to uh, code the boundary Uh, of any shape to be recognized uh, here uh, here we have taken uh, again eight directions over here and against each direction we are having some numerals so while coding the boundary uh, while going going from one pixel position to next boundary pixel position the direction is noted that the position is not important but direction is more important here so if that direction from going from one pixel to another pixel uh, is like this one uh, upright like this then the code for that one that that switch over will be 2 and if the direction is parallel to this direction then the code for that one will be 5 in this way by uh, repeating 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 uh, this process we will get uh, uh, codes for boundary pixels so uh, so all these five feature uh, extraction methods have been proposed over here uh, so, so far uh, the uh, complexity is there that all the methods uh, are uh, required of cumbersome calculation over there so we can tell that when we will do the method of classification the processing time of the process will be reduced considerably and uh, we will be uh, we will get a real time system from this the dollar references what have been used in our work thank you yeah mr vinod kumar yeah thank you sir yes. Uh, now yeah you have stopped sharing also yeah thanks a lot for presentation
okay so now uh, i would like to open the session for the question answer so first i let, let me unmute the om prakash sir om prakash sir uh, yes. uh, now you can uh, if if anybody want to ask some queries or have some question so so you can raise hand like this thing okay and uh, uh, means uh, anybody have any query question right now so that we can give chance because i have muted everybody mr vinod kumar it is a nice presentation yes. and uh, it is a like a image processing something like that yes. and i hope that it is very much useful to recognize any type of uh, picture or written material in any language it will be helpful in future and i hope that it is for all languages also uh, okay then what is the practical application the practical so by if we could recognize bangla numerals uh, with good uh, accuracy then i will extend this one we will extend this one for recognition of other uh, numerals in other language or characters 